Get it one, Big Asian Dad here. Today we're going to do the in-depth review of this new Dell Precision 5550, a 15-inch mobile workstation from Dell. Now, I've actually had spent a little bit of time with this computer since the unboxing video. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put it in the description below so you can check that out after this. Now, I am going to actually split this video into two parts simply because we've got a lot to cover and it just makes it easier for the second part here which is more about the display there. So I will do a pretty in-depth review of the display itself only. So you can actually check that video out after that. I'll put a link in the description below there as well too for you. So first off, we've got a bit to cover. Now I will be looking at the internals of this computer here. I'll put it near the, near the end of the video if you want to check that part just skip to the end there. First off, I'll quickly go through what this computer can be configured with. With the processor, it is running the 10th generation Intel Core. Now you can be configured anywhere between the i5 all the way up to the Xeon now. And as for the RAM wise, maximum capacity is 64 gigs and 32 gigs for ECC for the Xeons of course. And as for the hard drive wise, it does have two slots for M.2 SSD hard drives and there can be maximum of two terabytes per slot there. And as for the graphics wise, you can configure NVIDIA Quadro T1000 or the T2000. Fantastic work there. As for port wise from a previous video, we know this computer has three Thunderbolt ports and I'm happy to report they are four lanes for bandwidth wise. Fantastic. And I'm really liking that Dell has kept the headphone jack. I end up using that a fair bit. And also the SD card reader being a standard size. That's fantastic for people who do content creation like myself. And it's great I don't have to carry a dongle. On that note, it's a bit of annoyance that the 5550 has lost its USB-A port compared to the 5540 and also with the HDMI port as well. So I had to actually go scramble for the dongle there. Now as for a message for Dell, it's great that you've actually included a dongle which is the USB-A and HDMI but it would have been great if that dongle also included RJ45 because this is a mobile workstation and a lot of businesses still use your cable connection. So it would have been great either maybe pack in with a DA300 would have been great to actually include into this for free but it's nice that you include a dongle but it would have been nice to actually have a RJ45 port there. Having spent some time on this new keyboard, I gotta say I love this new keyboard they put in the 5550. I'm gonna bring out another computer out here for you us to have a look at and that is Dell Precision. 5540. So I've got these two in comparison actually in the same time and I actually had to play with the keyboard from the 5540 and the 5550 and I had a few friends do the exact same thing here as well. Now what we described the 5540 after been playing with the 5550 for a while is the 5540 keyboard feels a little bit mushy so that means that the 5550 keys feels much more tactile, has better bounce to it as well and we kind of like the actual less spacing between the keys as well too. I do love this new keyboard but there's one thing you've just got to take note of and it's just something you've got to get used to is that the delete key has changed its position on the keyboard. It used to sit on the top right hand corner but now it's actually moved it one in to make room for the new power button here. The power button used on the 5540 used to sit isolated by itself outside the keys but now it's integrated back in. So when you go for the delete key don't go all the way to the right. I've actually turned the computer off by accident a few number of times when I was actually reaching for the delete key. But just make note of and it's just a matter of getting used to it uh, that the delete key has changed its position there. And as for the trackpad, I love the new texture of this trackpad as well. It has really nice smooth feel to it and when I, even when I had moist hands there it was quite easy to glide over this trackpad here. Absolutely fantastic there. Now I found something very interesting and I thought I'll never say this but I have actually found this trackpad too large and it actually has caused an issue that I thought I would never actually have. And I'm going to demonstrate this little issue that we have is basically when you're actually typing, you can see why I'm going to put my fingers in the home key when I'm doing touch typing here. My palm is already on the edge of these things. And as you're touch typing there, you're actually always constantly hitting the, the touchpad because of the mechanical button all the time. You'll start hitting that button randomly all the time uh, as you're touch typing itself. Uh, and you can just keep it hold down, it's actually not as bad. But 
if you lift it up a little bit, um, you do it like I do all the time, lift it up. But say, for example, I'm going to move my mouse down here. Uh, of course, if I'm not going to click on it, but I'm typing up really up there. So I'm just going to start typing and I'll, sometimes I'll just, just randomly type and I'll just accidentally move the cursor down to randomly there. Uh, wherever I left it, I'm not doing it, but I've noticed that uh, one of the BIOS updates that I first did, it did help with this palm rejection here, but being a mechanical button, it does still do it, and there's not much you can really do to it, but the only really trick is to actually push down and hold down uh, the trackpad itself, and then start typing itself, which is very, becomes actually uncomfortable. For me, I actually lift up a fair bit, and as you can see, I'm just still hitting, you hear the click, click, click all the time, so it's a bit of annoyance there that I've, I've found. Um, I hope that Dell actually listens to this and maybe make this trackpad a little bit smaller on each side, so we're not constantly actually having our palms on there and clicking it all the way. Or other way is to stop that from becoming a mechanical button where you don't actually have to press down and feed. maybe make it like a force feedback, kind of like um, how the Mac book, that would be kind of nice. That would probably solve the problem because then you can actually have palm rejection work a lot better there. When I tested out the speakers on the 5550, it's got four speakers now, two facing upwards and two facing to the ground compared to the 5540, it's only got two facing to the ground. So when I did the maximum volume test for the 5550, it managed to peak at 85.4 decibels which is actually a little bit less than the 5540, which is 92 decibels. But the sound quality was very different. The sound quality on the 5550 sounds a lot more fuller, richer, and balanced. Um, so you definitely hear it when you hear them side by side for sure. So they've definitely made some improvements on the speakers on the 5550, which is great to see they've made improvements there. Now Dell has included a 130 watt power adapter for the Precision 5550, and the computer does have express charge, which means it can charge the battery up to 80% in one hour's time. As for the battery life, this particular model of the 5550, I've got an 86 watt hour battery in this computer here, and I tested out in the five different modes there. So with the computer in power mode, basically I had the computer running at 100% and also the graphics running at 100%, I managed to only pull 55 minutes out of the battery there. And now as for better performance mode, I managed to get four hour battery life out of this computer here. And as for the better battery mode, I managed to get six hours and 30 minutes there. As for the battery saver mode, I managed to get nine and a half hours. Now, how to play with the new Dell Power Manager on this computer here. Now, this is something that's very new for 2020 for the Dells, and there is an option in there called Battery Extend Mode. Now, when I flip that on, wow, it reports it can do 19 and a half hours, and I did notice the display dimmed down a bit, but it wasn't like down to the way you can't really see it, it was just dimmed down a bit. And for the processor, it did slow down, probably even put it in a low power mode there. So I really wouldn't be doing renders with it, but if you need to just stream or just do your basic work or when you're on the plane, you'll get through most plane trips there. So that's pretty cool, I gotta say. The Dell Precision 5550 with the 6L battery weighs in at 1.86 kilos. So when I tested out the temperature and noise of this computer here, I found the hottest area is located near the middle of the keyboard here, which is unsurprising because that's where the processor and the graphics chip is located there. So I took the measurement at the Y key there. First off, my ambient temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. We are in winter here in Australia, but I expect some of these temperatures values to go up a little bit uh, if you're in a more warmer climate there. So when I had the computer on load at 100%, so this processor and the graphics at 100% utilization, I measured at the Y key, you're looking at 43.5 degrees Celsius, and the spacing in between, you're looking at 50.5 degrees Celsius. And as for the noise level for the fan, you're looking at 33 decibels, and it'll ramp up all the way up to 39 decibels. Now, it will mostly time, it will sit at 33 decibels, and every five to like seven minutes, it will ramp up to around about 39 decibels, and it will stay for 39 decibels for about 45 seconds or so, and then it will ramp back down again. But nice, likes to stay, sit at 33 decibels, so it's not that annoying at all. Now, taking note of those temperatures there, I gotta say, 
the palm area, you don't feel anything. So you all can quite happily work on this computer easily for hours still while this computer is on load and producing that amount of heat there. And on, even with the keys, you really don't feel that much warm. It is a little bit warm, but not crazy warm. You, it's definitely not uncomfortable at all still working on it for sure, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, while the computer is 100% low, I did take note of the temperatures on the bottom of the computer there. So I found the hottest area, which is actually the top middle, and it measured at 43 degrees Celsius. So definitely not bad. So when the computer is running at 50% low, where the processor and the graphics is running at 50% utilization, the Y key measured at 43 degrees Celsius, and the spacing in between measured at 48 degrees Celsius. And the fan ran at 33 decibels most of the time, and it will ramp up to 37 decibels, so not bad at all. I also ran the computer at 15% low, which is pretty much your very average use or low productivity work or streaming there. And it, the Y key measured at 34 degrees Celsius and the spacing in between measured at 42 degrees and the fan noise was at 30 decibels, so practically quiet there. And also took the measurement when the computer is idle and looking at 30 degrees Celsius. I did take measurements of the Precision 5540 at 100% load, the 5550 was 5 degrees cooler. So this means the 5550 has much better thermals there for sure. For the dimension and footprint of the new Dell Precision 5550, it has gone smaller. So I've got the 5550 in front and the 5540 at the back. As you can see, it actually has gone physically smaller. Yet it is impressive because it is able to actually get a larger screen real estate and the 5540 at the back there, so that's pretty good. Comparing them back to back, I have the Dell Position 5550 on the right and the 5540 on the left, and it has gone thinner. Now measuring from the front end, 5550 on the right, 5540 on the left. Again, a little bit more thinner as well. The 5550, which is on the right, has a larger screen real estate than the 5540, which is on the left. Let's have a look at the internals of the computer. Now, to actually remove the back cover of the Precision 5550, it does take a bit of effort. The first gauntlet that you need to get through is these eight screws here, and you do require a star-shaped screwdriver to actually remove them. Second off, you then need to pry this back cover off, and pretty much I have to lay, employ one of my daughter's Play-Doh tools, scalpel tools, to then pry it off. Now, to actually pry it off, you need to go in from the corner, and then slowly move towards the center of the front, and then from the corner, move all the way to the back of the corner of the computer. And then you do the same thing on the other side here from the corner and through the center, and then from the corner to the back of the computer there. And then that's how you kind of, you do need to do it slowly and you'll slowly get there. But once you do, you can remove the back cover and then we get to see what's inside. Now, straight away, you can see that the battery is at the bottom here. Now this is an 86 watt hour battery, this, which is a six cell battery. I do know there is a 56 watt hour battery, which is a three cell battery. I'm taking this, that will be probably a little bit smaller. But at the moment, I've got the 86 watt hour battery here, and to, the battery connector is right here. If you need to disconnect the battery, um, if you're just doing diagnostics or to find faults, uh, that's a good idea to disconnect the battery right here there. Right above the battery itself is where the SSD hard drive sits. So there are two of them, which is the M.2 format. So we've got one here and one here. Now, it's nice to see that Dell has included a heatsink on the SSD hard drive there, which is really nice. There's actually nice copper there too. And above there is the two sodium slots for the RAM. So I've got 32 gigs, so I've got two RAM sticks here. And then that's pretty much all you really have to worry about. Uh, we've also got the two fans and then one of these uh, would be a processor and the other will be the GPU here. This one's actually got the Quadro T1000 in there. As for display wise, this one here I've got here is a full HD non-touch version. They do have a touch version and they also have a 4K version as well. Now this full HD non-touch version is rated for 500 nits of brightness, which I will test in the second video there. And I'm happy to say this does not use PWM, which you will see in the next video as well. And as for the color wise, we'll test that out as well. As for the docking port for the Dell Precision 5550, I do recommend the Dell WD19TB or the Dell WD19DC. 
And the reason for that is because quite simply you need to actually get the Thunderbolts and also the power draw that this computer requires as well as to get the full potential of this computer here. One of my viewers wanted to actually know what is the boot time of the Precision 5550 to get into Windows. So let's perform that test there. And I have set the BIOS to be minimal and quick boot as well. So at the moment we're in Windows. We're looking at 15 seconds there. So we're looking at 15 seconds to get into the boot of Windows. I did perform the benchmarks for this Precision 5550. Now this one has an i7 with a Quadro T1000. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Precision 5540. Now that one has an i7 with a Quadro T2000. So you get to see the performance difference between there. Here is the pass mark score. The Citibench R15, Citibench R20, 3D mark, and also PC mark. As you can see from the benchmarks, the Precision 5550 with the i9 and T1000 catches up and sometimes beating this 5540 with an i9 and T2000. That's pretty good there, I gotta say. Dell has made many improvements to the Precision 5550. The keyboard, the trackpad, the speakers, the display, the thermals, the performance, the build quality is amazing and the finish. I love the finish of this laptop here. I gotta say the Precision 5550 is one of my favorite laptops of 2020. If you find it video informative and enjoyed it, give it a like and please share it as well. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember guys, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.